We are going to try to use a couple minutes. I'd encourage any of you that want to try to practice some of the emergencies that we just saw to just come in and start. I will not be offended at all. Uh, what we were going to do is talk about advanced approaches to the frontal sinus. Um, I'm going to show you the draft three incisions and some of the important steps. What I would tell you is that what I'm going to show today is an outside in draft three approach and I already made some cuts. Those cuts are really to define how much bone needs to be drilled away. And so obviously we know that the drill out comes with drilling out bone. To do that, what we do is to try to identify the places where uh, the bone has to be gone to get to the floor of the frontal sinus. Uh, I do that by identifying the roof of the maxillary sinus uh, and making a small incision here. I'm going to take uh, an incision off of the lateral wall of the nose um, and going all the way up to the top. When you get to the top, we stagger those incisions so that we include the septal swell body with our septal incision to expose the septum. And so I do that here. After you've done that, what you'll see is that now we can take and elevate this whole mucosal surface off the lateral and medial compartment and then drag it back so that we can start to see exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for a landmark here. Usually there is a little dorsal artery and nerve here, halfway back, that confuses you, thinking you're going to find that first olfactory neuron. But in fact, that first olfactory neuron looks like this, where it comes with an artery and a nerve together. Uh, and that is exactly the posterior limit of our dissection. You did all of this to identify the bone that needs to be drilled out to be able to get access to the floor of the frontal sinus that you can see that is see-through. And if I put myself through here, we'd end up in the frontal sinus floor. I might try to go to the navigation view to show us that. That that is that first oh, olfactory neuron, kind of. You can see on axial that we're right at the serpent's tongue where you see it coming, projecting anteriorly, because medially it is brain. Laterally, there is still airspace that heads posteriorly. Uh, and then as you come and just look underneath where we were, we know that's all frontal sinus above us. And so if I was to poke through there with anything, including the drill that I'm about to, uh, it goes. I will tell you that I don't use these flaps. Um, several people will tell you, oh, I create weird flaps everywhere because it helps with mucosal healing. I find that the flaps are just a bit too fiddly for me. And so all I do is make sure that those flaps go right up the microdebrider. Um, I, don't, I think there are alternatives. And the hardest part about it is that it plugs your microdebrider. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, it frequently, because this septal swell body is so thick, it can plug your microdebrider, so just be cautious of that. Um, you can leave them attached and use them to reline the posterior table. I saw Jim uh, show me his flaps like that. Uh, you can use the lateral nasal wall flaps, uh, inferiorly based. Um, this one, instead of cutting it off, and I saw Brad Woodworth show me that here at this course uh, a couple years ago. I will tell you, in my hands, I just put them up the microdebrider. Um, just because the incidence of them getting wrapped up in what I'm drilling later is just so high that I think, from my standpoint, if you're learning to do this procedure, it's better to just uh, try to approach it. What you can see is, is that that same thing that Nitin had showed us about 2B, where you take a small sliver, you've left the bottom part of the middle turbinate, but you can attack the armpit of the middle turbinate, is that if you do that, now you're in a position to see this armpit, and that very easily you could remove bone from here and see your frontal sinusotomy that I know you guys all created in the morning, the nice draft 2A that uh, Nitin did. This is the technique I told you about turning the microdivider into a drill, that if you have a small amount of drilling to do, you can very easily do that with the microdivider. I wouldn't recommend it for larger amounts of drilling. You can heat up the handpiece and create damage. But certainly when we're looking at trying to create a, a frontal sinusotomy like this. This is an easy way to do it. Now I can see my first olfactory neuron. I can see my frontal, and I realize that this part of the brain projects more anteriorly than this part of the brain, because this is not brain, and why we're going to have a horseshoe shape in the end. I'm going to change to do my draft three drill out with a 30 degree scope. I have put a lens. Oh, you're kidding me. 
I have put a lens cleaning system on my 30 degree scope and I'm just trying to find it. Um, I had to jimmy it up because it was for a different scope, but I wanted to show you what I do use in the actual OR. Uh, I use this one. Could you do me a favor, Greg, and I like switch? I like how the course co director you know, hides the, the nice toys. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want to switch over to? The coin ulterior? Yeah, to the coin nutrition, I'll show the difference between the two. The reason I wanted to show this is now with a 30 degree scope, uh, and I'm going to focus it a tiny bit and then clean my lens. Oof. That I'm going to show the navigation screen, Ben, if you could. That when we're looking up with an angled endoscope, we can more easily see all the bone that needs to be drilled. We can very clearly see the very nice draft 2A frontal sinusotomy that Nithin has created. And we can see the first olfactory neuron. So if you came straight from here and went medially, you'd be in the brain, just as Nithin told us about in his lecture. What you need to go is anteromedial to take out all this bone, because this is the floor of the frontal sinus um, and exactly where we want to be. So you can see all that together. We're in the frontal, and then it has a horseshoe shape when we look on axial. Right here, we're in the back of that horseshoe on axial, um, and that we need to remove all this bone. To do that, you can either use the, the drill bits that go on the micro debrider uh, that Greg alluded to, because they have suction, so if you're a one man, oh, if you're a one man show, that's a, a good way to have suction in addition to irrigation. What you want to try to do is, I would recommend doing this either with a friend uh, or a trainee to blot the sidewall of the nose because when we're drilling this bone, which I already exposed, the risk is that you can come through the side, soft tissues of the sidewall of the nose. Um, would you mind blotting for me, Nathan? What you'll see me doing is taking away that same lateral beak that I told you about just in a more extensive way. And very soon, I'm going to see Nathan's hand there telling me you can't come more lateral than that. You can come more anterior, but you can't go more lateral than what he's just showed me because I can see it blotting right there. And now all I'm going to do is use that as my lateral landmark and I'm going to drive myself anteromedially, understanding where the first olfactory neuron is. So I'm never going to go medial there. I'm going to go anterior, and then I'm going to go medial so that I can create that half horseshoe shape. The reason I wanted to show this is that this is be a drill out 2B. Uh, Nathan talked about a hand tool 2B, but this is a drill out 2B. I haven't taken down the, the septum yet. Um, but I still have created a maximal aperture into my frontal sinus. What you saw was soft medially there. You could see some blue. That is an indication that you've come to the intersinus septum, so that when I keep going, I'm going to cross over and be past midline. You can see Nathan is helping me again with the landmarking, and that how much bone we can remove anteriorly. And he told us this during his lecture that you can lift the patient's head off of the, off of the table because there's so much bone here. And this so much bone is what lets us get really good extension of the frontal sinusotomy coming anteriorly. There's going through and now you can see we're going medially and we don't end up in the brain, we end up in the other side because Instead of going from here, the tail of the horseshoe, and going medially, we've gone anterior, and then we went medially to create that half horseshoe shape. For those of you who want to uh, see the remainder of steps for draft three, uh, I will be at the front doing it. All it's going to really involve is a septectomy, which if I knew I was going to do a draft three, I would have done in order, uh, meaning I would have taken out a portion of the septum here so that I could work from both sides. But you can already see the shape that we can get for a unilateral draft three or drill out 2B with an intersinus septectomy uh, done this way. Greg, you think I can stop there and anybody who wants to can come see the remainder of the draft three? Or do you think we should keep going and do it? Greg? Yes. What? Thoughts about uh, whether we should just keep it? 
Yeah. I'm going to stay here and do it, and we're going to project it for a while on the screen. You're welcome to watch on the screen to see what, um, how the draft three unfolds. But basically, I'm going to do exactly what I did on this side to the other side, and I'm going to take a portion of the septum. And by doing so, you're going to see the full horseshoe-shaped draft three as opposed to what you're seeing right now, which is a half a horseshoe. If you could see the half horseshoe, I'm going to show it to you right now uh, just before we go which is here. Just trying to take it all so I can show anterior ethmoid artery at the back. I'm taking a lot of mucosa, which obviously isn't the goal at surgery time, but I'm going to do it to show you guys something. The, what I'm going to show you is now on uh, a combination of the endoscope and the image guidance. So we'll go to image guidance. What you'll see is that I am into the left frontal sinus, I am into, in this case, an intersinus septal cell, which opens into the right frontal sinus. And we're going to find that right frontal sinus as I go through here. But it is the shape of a half of a horseshoe. This cell is the one that I alluded to as the tail of the horseshoe cell, because it's what makes a circular shaped frontal sinusotomy into a horseshoe is having this at the tail of the horseshoe cell, the very back end of the horseshoe cell is this structure, which is the anterior artery that Sanjay has cut through from the other side, and that's the bony canal that it sits in. That tail of the horseshoe cell, as Nitin alluded to, is a very good landmark for identifying that it's one, the frontal's here, one dome back from that is exactly where you're gonna have the anterior artery, and you can see that on image guidance uh, there. And so that's exactly how I would do half of my draft three, identify the lateral nasal wall where I can't cut through the skin, pull anterior and go medial until such time as I come through to the other side. And now if I take out a portion of the septum and join it to the other side, we're gonna have a completed draft three. Anybody who wants to see more, please join me at the pro section station. We'll leave it going on the uh, video. Um, but anybody who wants to start, please come into the lab and all the preceptors are here to help you.